Hello, welcome to my channel today. This is a King's Tutor. Okay, if it's the first time of joining us. Kindly like, comment, share this video. Okay, and if you're if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for your support and everything you've been doing for our channel. Okay, now I want to see single entry and incomplete records part two. Okay, we have saw uh, we've seen uh, the introduction part of uh, this um, video. We saw. Uh, how profits can be gotten. Okay, we saw the definition of single entry. Like we um, said, single entry is that entry that does not connote to the double entry principle. Okay, where only one full aspect is being what recorded, while the other is left on record. Okay, why we also saw the meaning of incomplete records. Why uh, it means that where the records are insufficient or inadequate. Okay, to prepare the what. The final accounts okay so if you have not seen that video please check in the link below this in my youtube channel to watch that before this okay so we saw um, the uh, competition of our profits so we said even if uh, the single entry could not a situation whereby prof um, their financial statement is not well stated it is either a single entry form or it is incomplete we said their aim is to make profit since they are not um, not for, for profit making organization, their aim is to make profit. Okay, so we saw two ways in which the question might come from single entry in the computation of their profit. And the first one is computation of profit from two balance sheets. We saw that in the previous video. Please check that. Why the second one was said uh, conversion of single entry to what double entry? Because when you not convert from single entry to double entry. You cannot prepare the final account from that. Okay, so because that can only be done by um, a knowledgeable accountant, in which the financial statement is given to you, they are all in single entry form. So we use the step using our intellect, okay, as an accountant to what to convert single entry to what double entry. So it is from there now they can now prepare the what the final account that comprise of trading profit or loss account and the what. The balance sheet okay so we want to see the second part we saw the first one which is competition of um, profit from two balance sheets while the second one is conversion of single entry to what to double entry okay so we have various steps to convert single entry to what to double entry okay and the first one is preparation of statement of affairs to prepare statement of affairs now in the previous video i also mentioned what statement of affairs mean we said statement of affairs is uh, a summarized balance sheet okay so the statement of affairs shows in uh, a tabular form the uh, accounting equation which comprises of what assets liabilities and what capital okay so the statement of affairs is prepared to get the capital that is the essence, the capital that will be used for what? The balance sheet. Okay? The same way they prepare the balance sheet, in which our asset is on the right hand side, liabilities the left hand side. So you deduct the um, liabilities from the asset to get the balancing figure as the what? The capital. Okay? Now let me show you what I mean by that. For instance, it is our statement, statement of affairs. And take note, the statement of affairs, you use only the items at the beginning. Because the single entry, conversion of a, a single entry to double entry, they will give you uh, items for two years. Okay? So, for instance, they will give you an uh, item that belongs to, uh, let's say, 1st of January 2019 and also 31st of uh, December 2019. They will give you two dates, so they might give you stock for this date and give you for this date. They might give you another one, let's say debtors for this date and also for this date. So your aim in preparation of statement of affairs is to use only the items at the beginning to prepare this. Okay, so if the cash book is given, 
you use if the cash book is given at a later date, probably on the 31st, but the balance brought forward in the cash book was brought from the previous year. So the cash that was brought forward can also be is also included here. So you record items, your assets here, which comprise of our land and building. If there is, you have uh, your plant and machinery. If there is uh, furniture and fittings. If there is, okay. Also, our debtors. If there is debtors, uh, stock. Okay. So you prepare all that for the asset. Now, also our liabilities. If there is liabilities there, okay. Remember, we also have said cash or bank. So liabilities also. Can have creditors, okay. Can also have accrued rent, okay. So if you deduct, remember we're supposed to have the same balance. So if we add up all assets and add up liabilities, now we deduct the liabilities from the asset, the balancing figure will now give us what we call the capital. So, the first step is to prepare what? The statement of affairs. Why are we preparing it? To get capital. Because it is this capital that we will use in the what? The balance sheet. Okay? So, that is the first step. Preparation of what? The statement of affairs. Remember, I said you use items at the beginning, not the ones at the what? End. To get the statement of affairs. To get the what? The capital. So, that's the first one. Okay? And the second one is analyze. The cash book. Analyze the cash book for receipts from debtors and drawings. Now, the second step. Now, in single entry and um, incomplete records, while converting from single entry to double entry, you'll be given uh, a cash book. Okay, or well, I give you um, a bank statement that involves the cash column of the bank account. So your um, focus should be check at the debit side. Now let's take, for instance, let me say this is a cash book. Let me use this as a cash book. Okay, now let's take, for instance, the cash book. The cash book you have at the debit side, balance per forward, you have receipt from debtors. Okay? Okay? At the credit side, you have, you can have rent, you can have other expenses, you can have salaries, and you should have drawings. Balance carry down. Let's say the cash book, because it is normally given in the question. Okay? Let's say the cash book is given like this. Now, the second step is to analyze the cash book for receipt from debtors and draw it. And the essence of analyzing the cash book is to ensure that there is receipt from debtors and also there is drawings at the credit side. If there is no receipt from debtors in the cash book that was given, you have to, uh, to look for it. Now, how do you look for it? Now, most times the examiner will want to trick um, um, those writing the exams, removing what they receive from debtors. So you have to uh, to prepare the cash book with some uh, additional statements given. So you add up the credit side and also the debit side. The balancing figure now will not be what received from debtors. In the same way, if receipt from debtors was given and drawings was not given, also. Definitely, you have to look for the drawings. How do you do that? You also probably, uh, with the additional statement given, you add up uh, the debit side of the cash book and add the credit side, deduct the credit from the debit 
the balancing figure will give you now the what the drawings. So in the cash book, you should have the receipt from debtors and what drawings. That is the one, the second step. You analyze the cash book. Okay? Now the third one, the third step is to reconstruct the control account. Now we have talked about control accounts in our previous video. Okay? I will leave a link to control accounts in my what YouTube channel below uh, this video. Okay, now it is uh, important you have a, a knowledge of control accounts. So, now the third step is to reconstruct the control account. Now, why are we doing this? Now, in the control account, we have the purchase ledger control and the sales ledger. The purchase ledger control comprises of items that consigns the creditors, while the sales ledger consigns items that consigns what the debtors. Okay, now in preparing um, the single entry. Or converting them to a double entry. Um, items for sales and purchases might not be given. Okay? Items for sales and purchases might not be given. So it is the responsibility of the accountant to provide sales and purchases. Now, how do you do this? Now you will use items given that relates to what the uh, purchases ledger and also that relates to what the sales ledger to get it. Okay, that is why I said the knowledge of control accounts. If you have not seen that, check in the um, link below. Watch the control account video. Okay, be that as it may, let me give you a, a brief. Now, for instance, we have the sales ledger. Now, the sales ledger is prepared to get the credit sales. Okay. Now, what are the things you will post here? Everything that consigns the debtors. Okay? Now, we have said you post to the debit side what increases their debt, and you post to the credit side what reduces their what? Their debt. Okay? Now, for instance, in these um, two um, years, different dates that I told you about, for instance, you have debtors at the beginning, and you have debtors here at the end also. So, how do we do this? Now, remember, all debtors have a debit balance. So the one at the beginning will be our balance brought forward. So you have balance brought forward. The one at the beginning. That is when you put the debit side. Okay? Now, in the cash book, remember I told you about receipt from debtors. So you need the receive money from debtors. And if you receive money from debtors, you need the debtors paid their debt. So it is credited. So, since the um, entry is on the debit side, the corresponding entry should be on the credit side here. So we we'll have cash, which raises from here. So the next one will not be the uh, closing entry. Okay, it's at the end of the year, so we we'll post it at right hand. Now you can post any other item that relates to sales data or to debtors. For instance, um, we have bad debt. If there's bad debt in the question, you can also post it. If um, there's discount allowed, you can also post it. Okay? So, but once we add, we should have the same total. But this will be greater than this. So the balancing figure will not give or call credit sales. So, so that when you add them together, it will give you the same total. So the credit sales now will now be our sales. Now, there are some situations in which they will give you an existing cash sales. It might be in the cash book. They might not say cash, cash sales. It might give you a figure. Now, in a situation whereby you now have credit sales and there's another cash sales in the cash book, what do you do? How do we get our total sales? You just add the credit and the cash words together to get your total sales that will go to the trading profit or loss account. Okay? For instance, we have completed the sales data and gotten our credit sales. And we already have what? Um, the cash sales from the cash book from the question. Okay? So what do we do? Now we just write while preparing our adjustment sales account. Now, this is the first side, the corporate, uh, corresponding entry comes here. So, we'll just write um, 
किया और उससे उसने जा फिर अमाउंट दैट लॉ राइट कैश और राइट क्रेडिट सब से उसने जा राइट क्रेडिट दिस इज कैश यू ऐड इट टुगेदर सो आवर बैलेंस कैरी डाउन ओके सो the total now will now be the total sales now will go to the what the trading profit or loss account as our sales okay so that's for sales ledger now another one is the purchases ledger remember i told you the control account the control account comprises of the sales ledger and what purchases ledger another one is what the purchases ledger okay in the same way in the same way we will prepare our purchases ledger Okay, purchases ledger. I will also have creditors at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, so all creditors have a credit balance. So our balance brought forward will be at the credit side. Balance brought forward, which is this, the one starting it. So it will be here. Okay, so probably we have. Um, items paid to the creditors which is in the cash book if it is paid it means it is what debited here okay so let's say probably uh, an amount was paid to the supplier it was credited in the cash book so we'll just write it here as what cash corresponding entry if it is paid to the creditors or supplier now if there is this cash receive you can put it here Okay, other items that concerns the what the creditors. Okay, now the balancing figure, the end date of the creditor. Also, at first we'll post it to uh, the debit side, the balance carried down, so that the corresponding entry comes to the credit side. So, now if we add this and deduct it from this, we'll be having a balancing figure which is what the credit purchases. Credit purchases is the reason for preparing this. Okay, so this is the purchases that will be used also in the what in the trading profit or loss account. Okay, so that is the third step. We construct the what the control accounts. Now, why are we doing that to get our credit sales and the what our credit purchases? Okay, the fourth one is a prepare adjustment. Okay. Now there are adjustments, there are items of expenditure that might probably have adjustment. It might be either owing as accrued or it might be paid in advance as prepaid. Okay, so we have to adjust them. Okay, so I have done a detailed video on adjustment. I will drop the link in this uh, uh, below this video. So you check that in my YouTube what, channel. Okay, detailed video on what adjustment. Now be that as it may, if for instance the rent was paid here and probably we have an accrued rent let's say we have accrued rent we have a figure here and also figure here okay and also salary so what do we do now we have rent here we have accrued rent you don't just post this we have to what, do the adjustment now how do we do this now we have to what, prepare something like this now the rent has been paid here as cash and the corresponding entry can come here as cash okay so now now accrued rent now when it comes to adjustment remember our accrued we said we add up what accrued to the amount that has been paid for that current year we are taking confidence of and for that current date is the recent one which is 31st the later one which is 31st but for um, the one preceding that uh, recent date we do reverse of what we should have done for instance for accrued we said we add now that adding is for the current um, year okay so the essence of this adjustment is for what the final account and the final account posting is normally what at 31st the end of the year so we are making emphasis on what the end so it means we are going to add. But if we have an, any date that is not this, we do the reverse of what we are supposed to do. Okay? So for this now, 
our children we have at the beginning and this we have at the end. Okay? So this will not be less. So it will come at the opposite side, which is balance brought forward. Which is this. Right? Why this one now to be added to this as balance carry down. So whatever we have here, we add it. So we will add here, now we subtract this from it, and the balancing figure will now be profit or loss account. Because it is going to profit or loss account. Okay? That is what it will put to. Now if you don't want to do it in this way, fine. Now what do we do? Now we have to do it this other way, not do it that way. Now, what do you do? You just put rent. And I said, amount paid. Now, the amount paid is this. That was paid. Okay? Now, I said, add accrued for 31st. Add this. If you add it, you have a figure here. Now, I said, less. Less accrued for first. Okay, so this amount now is all go to what the profit or loss. Okay, that is either you do it this way or do it this way. It is the same one thing. Okay, so another one also is prepaid. When it is also prepaid, for instance, we have salary here, and we also have prepaid. That's a prepaid salary. Okay, the same way salary is also what and expenses. So what do we do now? Prepaid for um, that current year, which is 31st, with less. But any dates that is uh, not a current year, what we add. Okay, so in this now we're going to have salary. Now, <clears throat> salary, we can have cash here also. Okay? Now, we said for that current year, we less. So, we can ask the first one, which is the first is added. So, we can have the balance brought forward first. Then we'll have our cash. Then, why this one at the end can now be yeah, our balance carried down? Okay, so whatever we have, if we have, whatever we have will not be our uh, profit or loss. This is now put to the profit or loss account as a balancing what figure. Okay, so that is the adjustment. Okay, to have an in-depth knowledge, please check in the uh, link below. Now the fifth one is our trading profit or loss account okay uh, the trading profit or loss account i also have a video relating to what to that okay a trading profit loss account is the same way we have been preparing for final accounts okay now it comprises of um, uh, the trading account and profit or loss account, which is known as a what? An income statement. Okay, so now look at the format. Profit or loss account, or which is known as a what? The income statement. So remember, I said we we'll have two dates. Now for stock, now the one at the beginning that has the first date. Is now our what? opening stock. Remember the one at the beginning. Okay. Now the next one is add purchases. And which is our purchases? Remember our uh, purchases ledger control account where we have our credit purchases. That purchases now is all we use here. Okay. So I will have other items if there is carriage inward. We add carriage inward. Okay. If there is return outward, also less. 
So we also have less closing stock. Now how do we get closing stock? I said the stock, the one at the beginning is the opening, while the one at the end is the closing. So that is now our closing of the stock. Now on the credit side we have our sales. Remember our sales? Now we had um, the credit sales from the sales ledger and we added the cash sales if there is to get our total sales. This is where you appear. So you see that if you don't do that, you cannot have sales and purchases. And if you don't have sales and purchases, you cannot prepare this, which is the final account. So we have sales and if there is return inward, we also less. Okay? So our sales, this is now our cost of goods sold. So sales minus cost of goods sold will give us our gross profit. Okay, so this is our final. Okay, so the gross profit carried down will be brought down here as gross profit brought down. And if there are other incomes, you add it to it, in the result. Then those expenses, no adjustment you made, the, those ones with due adjustment, it will be posted here as, let's say, rent, the adjusted value, not the one in the cash book, because we have done adjustment. Another one is salary, if there is depreciation. Okay, so. If this side is better than this, we'll have what? Our net profit. Okay, so this is our net profit. Add the trading profit on this account. Now, before I proceed, there is something I did not say the depreciation. Now, most times, it, it might not be stated directly the way um, we know the depreciation to be, probably given the percentage. Now, for instance, if we are giving two dates, like what I said before. First, first, 2019, and 31st, December, 2019. And they said Moto Van, Moto Van is 20,000 at the beginning. Now, at the end, they now put the value as 18,000. They would not make any notes for to state in the pressure. But with this now, it is obvious that the value has what dropped. It dropped by what, 2,000. It means probably wear and tear. So what it means is that depreciation has occurred. So as someone that is intellect in this, you should know that depreciation has occurred. They will not state, they might not state in the question. Okay? But once you notice an asset has reduced in value from what it is from the beginning to the end, it is assumed that it is what depreciation. So you just say 2,000, 20,000 minus 18 equals 2,000. So this 2,000 is the position that will go to profit or loss that will come here as expenses. Okay? Please take note of that. Very important. Okay? So that is how our trading profit or loss account will look thus. Okay? Why the last part will not be to what? Prepare the balance sheet. Or what we call known as statement of what financial position. The balance sheet appears the same way we already know it. You can check in my channel to see how to do that. Okay. So also, now let's prepare the balance sheet. So we can have statement of financial position. Financial position. Now we have our fixed assets. We have cost, depreciation, net book value. So if we have land and building, depreciation is less than our net book value. If we have plant and machinery, There's a precision, okay? And we have furniture, all fixed assets, okay? Now, only put this in the depreciation. If there is none, you let you ignore it. So, this will be our value. So, this minus this will give us this. 
So another aspect is our current assets. The current assets will be our stock. Now the stock you bring here is the closing stock, the one at the end, if you're giving two dates, remember. So we have stock, uh, we have our debtors. Now the debtors and other items you post here are items at the end, please, take note. So the debtors at the end, uh, we have cash. Now the cash you post here is the one cash below the balance carried at the end, okay? The balance carried at in the question given, the cash book, the balance carried at the end, not the one at the beginning, when the balance goes forward. So that is what will be here as cash, okay? If there is a bank, you also put bank. If there is prepaid rent or prepaid, any prepaid expenses, you put it here. So you add it to this. It should give us. Then we come here, our capital. Okay, now we add net profit. Remember our net profit? Net profit that was gotten from the trading profit of those accounts. You add it. And the next thing is to less drawings. Now you remember these drawings I talked about from the second statement. Analyze the cash book for receipt from debtors and draw it. So the essence of the drawings is because of this. I said it. Okay, so if we less it, now we now have our liabilities. Okay, we can have creditors. We can have accrued rent or accrued expenses. Okay, so we have other liability, you add it up, you should have your statement of financial position. And with that, you have been able to work, convert single entry to what? Double entry. And also, preparation of what? Final accounts with incomplete records. Why? The records are incomplete, so to ensure that uh, you are able to prepare the final account, you should convert them to double entry using these steps. We said the first one, prepare statement of affair. Second one, analyze the cash book. Why are you analyzing the cash book? Because of receipt from debtors and what drawings. The third one, reconstruct the control account. Why are you reconstructing the control account? To get your sales and purchases. How do you get your sales and purchases? Using what? Sales ledger and what? Purchases ledger. Okay? The next one is prepare adjustments. Expenses adjustment and other adjustment. Why the fifth one is what? Prepare your trading profit or loss account or what is known as the income or statement. Why the fifth one is what? The balance sheet. So this is how to do it. Now we are going to see a proper question that comprises of this in our next video. Okay? So watch out for that. So if you are just joining us, please. Ensure you have subscribed to the channel so you know when we post that. Like, comment, and please share this video to those that need it. Thank you very much.